August 9th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Philippians chapter 1 from the New Testament. From Paul and Timothy, slaves of Christ Jesus, to all the saints in Christ Jesus who are in Philippi, with the overseers and deacons, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God every time I remember you. I always pray with joy in my every prayer for all of you because of your participation in the gospel from the first day until now. For I am sure of this very thing that the one who began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Christ Jesus. For it is right for me to think this about all of you because I have you in my heart since both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel all of you became partners in God's grace together with me. For God is my witness that I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And I pray this, that your love may abound even more and more in knowledge and every kind of insight, so that you can decide what is best, and thus be sincere and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that my situation has actually turned out to advance the gospel. The whole imperial guard and everyone else knows that I am in prison for the sake of Christ. And most of the brothers and sisters, having confidence in the Lord because of my imprisonment, now more than ever dare to speak the word fearlessly. Some, to be sure, are preaching Christ from envy and rivalry, but others from goodwill. The latter do so from love because they know that I am placed here for the defense of the gospel. The former proclaim Christ from selfish ambition, not sincerely, because they think they can cause trouble for me in my imprisonment. What is the result? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is being proclaimed and in this I rejoice. Yes, and I will continue to rejoice for I know that this will turn out for my deliverance through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. My confident hope is that I will in no way be ashamed, but that with complete boldness, even now as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether I live or die. For to me, living is Christ and dying is gain. Now, if I am to go on living in the body, this will mean productive work for me, yet I don't know which I prefer. I feel torn between the two because I have a desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far. But it is more vital for your sake that I remain in the body. And since I am sure of this, I know that I will remain and continue with all of you for the sake of your progress and joy in the faith, so that what you can be proud of may increase because of me in Christ Jesus when I come back to you. Only conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ so that whether I come and see you or whether I remain absent, I should hear that you are standing firm in one spirit with one mind by contending side by side for the faith of the gospel and by not being intimidated in any way by your opponents. This is a sign of their destruction, but of your salvation, a sign which is from God. For it has been granted to you not only to believe in Christ, but also to suffer for him since you are encountering the same conflict that you saw me face, and now hear that I am facing. God, I come before you today and pray for loud, fearless voices. <laughs> you know, Paul talks in here about how even while he was imprisoned, which was a really bad thing back then. I mean, it's bad now, but it was really bad back then. Um, that even though he was imprisoned for talking about Jesus, he was still speaking out about Jesus. And everybody who was within a few inches of him knew about his faith in Jesus and about you, God. And what did that look like? Because he talked about it all the time. And he says that it brought into the lives of most of the brothers and sisters brought into their lives confidence for them to also talk about you fearlessly. And I think about what that looks like in my life. Now, granted, most people know within a few minutes of meeting me, strangers, uh, that I'm Christian. I try and bring it up in some form or fashion uh, just to see if there's some sort of door that I can open there or maybe a window a little bit. 
at least start that conversation. And I remember a time in my life where I was afraid to do that. I was afraid of what they would think. I was afraid of um, what they would say to me. I was afraid of people getting mad at me. I was afraid that I didn't know what to say in those situations. That I didn't know enough about you or the Bible to say anything. And yet, it's really amazing if you actually <laughs> read the New Testament. When you went to get your disciples, they hadn't spent time with you yet. They hadn't spent time studying the Bible in the way that they would eventually. They hadn't done any of those things. And you're like, uh, let's go. <laughs> Took them out and started talking uh, about the amazing good news. And what did that look like? And I think back after reading this particular section that Paul is writing to this church he founded that I wonder when that changed for me. I was trying to remember like, when did I go from this awkward, fearful, what will people think of me? It's all about me stage into, into where I am now because where I am now has been around for a while, but it was probably maybe eight to 10 years ago that I truly cared more about what people thought than what you thought about me, God. And that whole piece of me had to flip. And I notice as I am more adventurous about talking about you, more fearless about talking about you because I care more about what you think than what people think. Um, I notice that people who are immediately around me are, are more than willing to do that as well. I take uh, some of the kids down to do peanut butter and jelly ministries, handing out sandwiches to the homeless. And we talk to them about you and ask if they want a Bible and, and we'll pray with them if they'll let us. And, uh, it's amazing. I see kids who will never ever share their faith and never talk to people about God. I see them in those situations, you know, praying for these uh, people who are with without homes and sometimes without food, um, who are in desperate situations. And I see them talking to them with kind and caring words ab about your promises, God. And I just see this amazing fearless heart come out of them. And I don't know if it's because of the situation and it's shocked them so much that people live that way because they're not used to seeing that. Um, I don't know if it's because they see the leader sharing so freely. Um, and, and I suspect a big part of it is obviously that you bring strength into their life in those moments when people need to hear. Um, and, it, and it gains a little bit of traction for them, a little bit of confidence. And then the next time they're in a situation, they have a little bit more confidence, a little bit more confidence. And God, I just, I just pray today that that confidence in all situations would be there. Sometimes if we're with people we know, there are so many filters in place because of our relationship that there may be less opportunity to talk about you because we've been shut down so many times. And I think about my mom who at one point said, I don't ever want to hear another word about God from you. I don't want to have this conversation ever again about you. And just a couple weeks, she let me pray with her. And I've been able to have conversations with her about you. And it's, it's not that I kept pushing the issue. I, of course, prayed to you about it. Um, but I, I was more worried and concerned about what you thought than what her insistence was was and so piece by piece as she saw you working in my life anytime anything happened I would say yeah because God made that happen or God allowed that to happen or God stopped that from happening I would always give you the glory and and she would eventually start to ask questions and uh, amazingly I was allowed to bring you up in conversations again and now I'm allowed a lot more freedom in doing that but it was because I cared more about her in, in all truthfulness. I loved her more than her resistance because I cared more about what you thought, God. I wanted to make sure she would hear about you and hear about your amazing and faithful love and about your grace and mercy, which she so needs to understand. And, and obviously about forgiveness and what does that process look like and, and how do you live your life that way? God, I just pray for everyone listening right now for that strength. You know, sometimes we just get into situations where we know you've opened a door for us and we don't say anything. We, we don't talk about you or we don't talk about our faith or, or, or we take the credit for something. 
And, and I know even now, if, if I happen to do those things, I can feel it. Like I feel so bad and so guilty when I, when I take credit for things. And I know that that was a moment to glorify you. And God, I just pray that you just always make those things really clear in our heart, that you give us the words to say. Um, sometimes we get really scared and frightened that we don't have the right words to the right or the right answers to the questions that are being asked. But one, I know that you'll always provide the answers. Two, I also know that if we don't have the answers, you always provide people who will have the answers. And three, most importantly, that if in faith we go out and talk to people about you and we do what we're supposed to be doing out of confidence, that you will make things right, that you will allow the people to hear what they need to hear or how they need to hear it. Um, I, I do know that you honor what we do in, in true faith and true confidence uh, in your grace and mercy, God. God, I do realize that this is hard for some people. I do realize it's uncomfortable uh, for some people, but I do ask that you just teach us how to change our hearts, to be more aware and respectful and in awe of what you know is important than what other people's feelings and thoughts and reactions to us would be. I ask that we care more about you than our own rejection. I ask that we love people enough to put what they need to hear in their eternal life with you, God, ahead of our anxiousness of talking to them in an uncomfortable situation. I ask for strength and comfort and confidence in those situations, God. God, I love talking about you. It's just amazing to me how many conversations I get to have now about you because there's no fear. <laughs> There's fear in a lot of other places in my life, but there's no fear in talking about you. I love talking about you. I love talking about all the things that you've done in my weaknesses, all the dark areas of my life, because you are just completely glorified in my testimony of how much I've messed up and what you've been able to do with my life. God, there's no longer fear. And for, for that, I truly thank you for giving me that understanding of it is all about you. It is not about how I feel about the situation. I thank you for that strength, God. In your son's name I pray. Amen.